Hello and welcome to the Cupcake Core Drilling and Drilling for Dough video. In this video, we will review why mining is necessary, how you use minerals in your day-to-day -day lives, the mineral exploration process, the different types of drill rigs used in mineral exploration, and we will get to see how the drill rigs operate. We will conclude with an activity where we will drill a layered cupcake or a layered pile of Play-Doh. From our drill holes, we will be able to construct a diagram referred to as a cross section representing the inside of our model. Let's go explore. So why do we mine, you ask? Well, simply put, we use minerals every day in our lives. Some minerals, like copper, we use all day long. From your cell phones and computers to your heating and air conditioning systems, refrigerators, and vehicles we travel in, electric, smart, or not, minerals make it possible. This graphic shows materials that every American born will need throughout their lifetime that are largely derived from mining. The total comes out to 3.2 million pounds of minerals, metals, and fuels. Now that's a lot of materials. If you are in disbelief, note that this number includes materials used to make the buildings you occupy or visit frequently, sidewalks you walk on, the many roads you travel, food you consume, vitamins you take, vehicles you travel in, and much more. The Minerals Education Coalition has lots of information on minerals and how we use them. If you are interested, their website is worth a visit and the URL is shown in the bottom right hand corner of this screen. So how do we find minerals and places to drill? Well, the first step is to get out there and look at the rocks. Pete is our prospector for this video. Pete will begin the exploration process by looking at the rocks in the area. Pete will take notes on what he observes and draw the different rock types on a map. Minerals commonly occur in faults or fractures in the Earth's crust, so these will be put on the map as well. One fault, Pete observed, is depicted by the blue line on the map. When a map is generated with rock types and faults or fractures, it is called a geologic map. On this map, the orange line encloses an area where rocks with a lot of rust, or what geologists call oxides, can be found, here referred to as the gold unit. The yellow outline are gravels and pieces of broken rock, referred to here as the yellow unit. The pink outline is where tilted layers of volcanic rock can be found, here referred to as the pink unit. Once Pete finds a rock that looks like it might have gold in it, he will send it to the lab to have it analyzed. At the lab, the sample will be crushed, melted, and mixed with some chemicals which will separate out the gold or mineral of interest. The lab will send the results back to Pete. If there isn't any gold, Pete will find a different place to prospect. But if there is gold in his sample, he will sample all around the area where he found his original sample, normally using an organized grid pattern to see if there are more rocks with gold in them. He will send his samples to the lab to be analyzed, and the lab will send the results back to him. Pete will then plot the samples with their gold content on a map similar to what is shown here. Orange dots represent samples with lots of gold. Yellow dots represent samples which have a little less gold than the orange dots. Green dots represent samples which only have a tiny bit of gold in them, and blue dots represent samples which have no gold. If they were all blue, Pete would have no choice but to go prospect somewhere else. But since Pete has lots of samples with gold in them, he needs to explore some more to figure out just how much gold is there and if it's worth making a mine out of. As stated above, minerals are commonly found in faults or fractures, which often make linear trends or patterns. The black arrow shows the trend or pattern the samples with lots of gold are making in Pete's project area. 
Once a pattern is observed and the geologic map is complete, Pete can choose the best way to drill the pattern of gold using his geologic knowledge and cross sections. What is a geologic cross section, you ask? A geologic cross section is a tool geologists use to look into the ground as if you were cutting the earth open. It helps geologists and prospectors to understand the distribution of rocks or mineral deposits below the surface. So using observations we make from rocks on the surface, we can project what is probably happening underground. For example, if a bed of rock is lying flat on the surface, it is safe to assume, until proven otherwise, that the rock is also lying flat underground. Or, if layers of rock are tilted on the surface, until proven otherwise, it is safe to assume they are also tilted at a similar angle underground. Pete noticed that the pink unit is tilted, so all units underneath the pink unit will be drawn tilted in the cross section at the same angle Pete documented on the surface. Let's tilt the surface of the earth up and look at the cross section Pete has generated from his surface observations. Here's Pete's cross section. This is what Pete believes is going on underground. Can you guess what the quickest way to prove or debunk a geologist or prospector's theory on what is going on underground? If you said drill a hole, you are absolutely right. What unit would you want to drill through here? Well, the gold unit, of course. We want to find some pay dirt. Let's talk about the different types of drill rigs used for exploration for a few minutes. There are two main types of drilling that takes place in the exploration world, reverse circulation and diamond core drilling. A reverse circulation rig and the cuttings that come from it are shown in the left-hand panel. A reverse circulation rig uses air and pressure to run a hammer bit, which effectively crushes the rock into small pieces and forces them back to the surface. A diamond core drill and the cuttings that come from it are shown in the right-hand panel. A diamond core drill uses a diamond impregnated drill bit, rotation, pressure, and fluids to cut around the rock. In both cases, half of the samples are sent to the lab to be analyzed for mineralization, and the rest stay with the geologist, who documents alteration zones, mineralization zones, and different rock types, along with faults and fractures. Using the depths down hole that are documented while drilling is taking place, the geological and geochemical data can be plotted on the cross section at the appropriate depth to give it more detail and to really understand where rocks and mineralization are occurring underground. Core drilling does not disturb the rock in the same manner as reverse circulation drilling does. Therefore, more data can be extracted from the sample, including vein and bedding orientation, along with the degree and orientation of fracturing or shearing in the rocks. Knowing the degree and orientation of zones that are fractured or sheared allows mining engineers to develop a mine plan which will offer the safest work environment possible for the workers. Safety of the workers is the most important aspect of a mine. Let's watch a couple quick videos explaining how the two types of drill rigs work. This is an animation showing how a reverse circulation drill rig works. The reverse circulation rig has an air compressor which feeds air to the top head of the drill rig through a large hose. There is commonly another hose attached, which mixes drilling fluids with the air. Reverse circulation rigs use dual walled pipe. Dual walled pipe is basically a pipe inside of a pipe. The air and the drilling fluids are forced down the outer portion of the dual walled pipe. The air and the fluids make their way to an interchange located down by the drill bit and are forced into the drill bit itself resulting in the hammering action of the bit, which breaks the rock apart. 
the air in the fluids push the cuttings up the hole where they re-enter the drill pipe through another interchange and travel up to the surface through the center tube. We can see the green material in the outer tube, which is the air in the drilling fluids, and the brown cuttings coming up through the center tube. The cuttings enter into the top head, which has a converter that sends the cuttings out through a separate hose, which then enter into the cyclone. Due to the air pressure required to create the circulation, when the cuttings enter the cyclone, they do so at very high speeds. The cyclone reduces the traveling speed of the cuttings so the samples can be taken when the cuttings exit the cyclone. A representative sample of the interval drilled is put into a sample bag and sent to the lab, and a small portion of that is placed in a chip tray for the geologist who will log or document the geology. Once the hole is complete, the pipe and the drill bit are taken out of the hole, the hole is plugged according to state regulations, and the drill rig is moved to the location of the next hole to be drilled. The following animation will show how a wire line works on a core rig. On a core rig, a diamond drill bit is attached to a string of pipe which rotates and cuts through the rock. There is a core barrel that is lowered down by a wire line that is also called an overshot, and it is locked into place close to the bit. The rock that is cut as the bit advances fills the barrel. When the barrel is full, the wire line is lowered down again. The wire line locks on to the quad latch or the spearhead on the top of the core barrel, which is hoisted back to the surface with the sample inside. The sample is boxed up and handed off to the geologist who will log the core or document the geology, cut the core in half, and send one half to the lab for analysis. Another tube is lowered to repeat the process to the desired total depth of the hole. Once the hole is complete, the pipe and the drill bit are taken out of the hole. The hole is plugged according to state regulations and the drill rig is moved to the location of the next hole to be drilled. With every hole drilled, more data is collected. Using the downhole depths that are documented while drilling is taking place, the geological and geochemical data are plotted on the cross-section. A more detailed picture or cross-section emerges, which assists the prospector or geologist in understanding where the rocks and mineralization are located underground. Using cross-sections and the amount of gold in each sample, a gold resource estimate can be made, which will state how much gold is present within a given area. A resource estimate will assist in the decision to proceed with mining operations or not. Now it's time for the activity. Welcome to the Cupcake Core Drilling or Drilling for Dough activity. Materials needed to complete this activity are minimal and consist of the model of choice, a straw, and a drawing of the model on a piece of paper. The suggested models to use for this activity are either a layered cupcake or layered Play-Doh wrapped in paper so only the top of the model can be seen. For the cupcakes, any contrasting colors will work. To make the layers, I have utilized white cake mix and food coloring, as well as layered chocolate, strawberry, and white cake mix, which makes a super delicious cupcake. I am not particularly careful about the layering because I like to have variability in the cupcakes. For the Play-Doh model, layer the different colors of dough in any manner you like. The layers can be flat, angled, folded, or discontinuous. The choice is yours. As for the straw, a transparent straw is best, but if you don't have one, you can simply blow the sample out of the straw into your hand or onto some other surface. The objective of this exercise is to make a cross section of the model of choice by drilling it using a straw. This method is analogous to core drilling. 
insert the straw or your core barrel into the model using a rotating motion. Make sure the straw goes all the way down to the bottom of the model, then give it a few extra rotations to break it free. Pull the straw back out. Plot the drill hole onto the outline of your model at the approximate location you drilled it at and document the thickness of the layers in the straw. Then repeat this process with a couple more drill holes. When you think you have enough data, draw lines connecting the matching layers across the outline of the model to generate the cross section of what the inside of your model looks like. Now it's time to see if your cross section resembles what the inside of your model actually looks like. If you're doing this activity with a cupcake, this can be accomplished by breaking the cupcake open either with your hands or your mouth. If you are doing this activity with Play-Doh, unwrap the container or the layer of Play-Doh to see what the layers in your model look like. In summary, exploration for minerals like gold is accomplished using a variety of methods. In this video, Pete started his project by simply getting out and looking at the rocks. Once he found something interesting, he sent it to the lab to be analyzed. The lab sent back the results, which indicated that there was gold present. So Pete went out and he sampled more rocks to see if there was any more gold around his original sample. Using Pete's geologic knowledge from looking at the rocks in the area, he generated a geologic map, and from that, a geologic cross-section, which allowed him to better visualize and target where he should drill. With each drill hole, which are here represented by the black stars, more data is added, which defines where the gold is, outlined in red, and is not present. Using cross-sections and the data from the drill holes, Pete can generate a gold resource estimate and decide whether he can make any money mining this deposit of gold. This concludes the video on cupcake core drilling and drilling for dough. We hope you have learned something about the exploration and the drilling process. We also hope maybe you got to eat a couple yummy cupcakes while completing the activity. We have many more educational videos and activities which can be found on our open data site. The data site can be accessed at the URL shown or by scanning the QR code displayed in this screen. If you are interested in learning more about ore deposits or mining in Nevada, I would recommend watching the ore deposits in overview or the mining in Nevada video. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.